Today, I wanna to share with you a bit of behind the scenes, how I take a concept from paper, vectorize it on the computer and Illustrator, and then manipulate those elements to combine a custom illustrative lettering piece. So let's go ahead and jump in and start on paper. All right, so starting here on paper, we're gonna sketch out um, the concept. And for this example, I'm gonna do uh, the word electric because it has a very specific uh, style that I have in mind. Um, that'd be great for showing me the kind of different techniques that I use from going from um, illustration to vectorizing it in Illustrator and then manipulating it and rearranging it there on the computer. Um, so I like to start just by writing out the word electric. Uh, and this is so I can kind of see how letters form together or flow just to get sort of an idea. Also, it's great to reference to because when you're drawing letters, you kind of forget how to spell. And countless times I've done an entire piece and completely forgot a letter or rearranged a couple letters. I just like to write it out a few times to see how these letters can interact. And I like, like for example, this, like this L, I always like to kind of stick a letter in there to save space. And then I just sort of iterate. Um, I continue to take these concepts and evolve it more. And I know with the word electric, I definitely want to do something kind of um, you know, electric with lightning bolts, zigzags, um, kind of grungy, that sort of stuff. And with these drawings, I, I tend to start with these flare tip pens or I just do a Sharpie, um, unless I'm doing some sort of script uh, font or lettering, then I meticulously draw with a pencil to perfect it because that's something that's harder to manipulate in Illustrator. But for this, you know, the more imperfect it is, the better. Uh, let's see. Hmm. So if I continue this, I can use a cool little effect here that here on this kind of drop where it goes over the C, a cool thing I can do in Illustrator. So I'm going to think I'm going to do that and then I automatically see that I can connect the T with the C up here. I like connecting these letters, having it flow in a unique way. And then I just noticed that there's a little drop here compared to this here. So that's a perfect, and I'm looking at this, so I think that's a perfect way to incorporate the lightning bolt into the actual piece. So you can see it kind of flows here. It makes sense. And this is very rough stuff. Just to get, I just keep iterating. And like the E, maybe I can get a little bit fancy with that. Like trick. And then maybe I can, well, let's see, that kind of drops there. So maybe I can do another bolt there and then maybe connect that. Oh, that might be too much. So let's see, now, now that I know a good direction, I will kind of take my time now and really get this right and clean. And when I do find a direction, it's very important that I don't let any of the letters connect. So like how the C connects to the T and this L connects to the C. I wanna be able to move these things around in Illustrator and really manipulate them and, and, and arrange them. So I need to have them all separate from each other. So when I find this direction, I'll just do multiple E's. I will do, you know, I'll use this L, I'll do the L, but I won't connect with the C. I'll just do a C and it doesn't matter if they're not a line because I'm gonna be using these and really going crazy on the computer with it. So it's just important that I get these elements down. Let's see, let's connect the T here and then we can connect that. Get the R, I, C. Get a few more E's in here. Um, another L just in case I don't like that. Another e. A few more C's here, kind of crazy. Couple R's, couple I's, different lines, and then the electric bolt here. Just 
So in case I don't like that C, let me get some different versions up here, skinnier, um, maybe a couple other R's. And so I'm kind of just giving myself a, a wide range of different variations of these letters so I can just pick and choose to put this, you know, together. Let's see, let me get another T in here just to be safe. And maybe just some lines that I can use. You can see here I've given myself all these elements and I think this is a, a good point where I can take a photo of this and drop it in my computer and then we can start messing with it there. So let's go ahead and move over there. All right, so here we are on the computer and we're gonna start in Photoshop. So I've got the image here on my computer and this is all we need. So I'm gonna quickly crop this down, get rid of this unneeded space. And we're going to boost the levels on this. Um, just to make the, the whiters white and the blackers black. Um, and this will come in handy for when we have to trace it in uh, Illustrator. So it kind of just gets rid of all this gray. We don't want any gray, just black and white. All right, see, that's too much. You can see where it's uh, getting the grays there in the letter. So we want that to be just as dark as it can be. All right, this looks, this looks good. We don't need this bit over here. So we can actually, ooh, that is a textured brush. So we can just paint over this with white. All right, there we go. All right, so let's go ahead and just save this to the desktop as a JPEG. And if we move over into Illustrator, start a new document and just drag in what we have here. All right, we'll zoom so we can see. So the key here is to image trace, and now it is a vector, but you can see it lost all that nice texture and kind of the, the grungy look to it. So if you go into the actual uh, uh, image trace panel, and if you expand the advanced in here, you can really play with all these sliders and see, and this depends on the kind of look you're going for. You know, every every design I do is different in some way. There we go, it's very subtle on this one. Try to, oh, there we go. It's the paths that does all the texturing. And threshold, if you take it up, it'll get thicker, or if you take it down, it'll get thinner. Um, I think I like it right in the middle, a little bit more true to what it was um, in real life. So if we click this to ignore the white, We'll be left with just the vector shapes there. And it's very important that right now, this is just an, an effect on that image. It's the tracing effect. So you need to go up here and click expand. And that's where it breaks all these up into different elements. So this is all now as one. Let me shrink this down holding option shift here. So we drag this off to the side. We can just sort of use this as all the different pieces we'll, we will need and ungroup it, and we can get started with this. So I am going to make a quick new layer here and drag it down. And I wanna work on black, because I know that with the end result, I want it to be on a black background. I'll go ahead and add that there, and just lock that layer just to be safe, so we don't mess with it. And I'll change these to white, okay. So let's see, let's look at these elements and see what I wanna use for the actual letters here. See, I like these E's. And if I hold shift and click, and then option, click and drag, I'll just copy those without taking, without, you know, just taking these actual pieces. I'm just copying them and duplicating them as I drag. Um, I don't know if I like this L or this L. No, I do think I like this one. Um, like this C, a lick, this T, mm, let's see, I like this, I don't know, actually I like this R. Electric, I think I like this skinny C here. And then for the base, let's see, do I like that? I think I like this one. So you can see, you know, I just picked these elements from when I was drawing on the paper. I'm kind of just giving myself all these different shapes to work with. 
And then here's where all the fun really begins, you know, putting the piece together. All right. So I want this line here to kind of connect all these. And I can see that, I don't know, this doesn't match up well to follow this line. So if I use the free transform tool, where's that? Here it is. Click here and hold command. I can, you know, drag this around and kind of skew this. See, that looks much better. Uh, kind of match up this angle to make it more vertical. And I use this rather than the actual selection tool because it keeps the, the general shape rather than just making it, you know, squishing it. Free, uh, this, yeah, free transform tool. It's, it's good for manipulating this sort of stuff and skewing and resizing versus just selection. All right, so I'll bring this in here. Match up this line with this line. So even though I'm trying to go for a sporadic look, I do want it to be, you know, consistent in some way. Just these minor elements to be consistent. All right. Let's see, I might want to make this larger. Now see, by making this larger, I actually make this thicker than the rest of the lines. Um, I don't know, it's not too bad, so I don't need to really mess with it, I don't think. Bring this down here just so we can start getting the general guide to where to place all the letters. So it's just a lot of very minor tweaks to get what you're looking for. Um, all right, so it's always nice to kind of take a step back. It's kind of like when I was in art school, they make you stand like 20 feet away from what you were doing to really get a look at it. And you can do the same here, just zoom out a lot. All right, let's see, I need to kind of fix this kerning to Make sure everything is sort of evenly spaced. And I don't know if I like this being so close to that or how I can really fix this. I can probably shrink this a bit. I don't want it to overlap that much. So I'm gonna go in here. And if I use the actual uh, direct selection tool, here, let me, if you double click this, you'll go into the path of this L shape specifically. So you won't mess with anything else here. So if I just sort of select this, Use the arrow keys and nudge it in. I can just select these points and squish it. Instead of just squishing it all at once, I sort of just squish the general shape of it here. And then I can just play with each little point to keep the texture. All right. And just double click anywhere and it'll go back out. All right, see, that looks much better. So, all right, let's connect these. See, I don't know if I want this T to kind of be up a little bit higher. This there. So again, I you know, I like that it's kind of sporadic here where everything's not really lined up perfectly. It's not there just yet. So it's just gonna be a lot of small tweaking here. All right, see, I definitely want this to extend all the way. So I don't know if I should. Uh, that's not what I want. If I want to keep this texture, yeah, if I stretch it out, it's just going to look very flat. So if like I would take this, do some steps there, some steps there, some steps there. It's going to, I mean, it's going to look like steps and I don't want that. So I'm trying to see if I can actually, I will just take one of these lines. And match it up here. So let's see, how can I, so I definitely need this to be longer, but I don't need all of it. So I will shrink it down with the eraser tool. All right, and match up the path, the general flow of the direction a bit. And there we go. And the, again, the great thing about this uh, piece in particular is that it's got this, it's got this textured look to it. So I can, you know, match this up and have it look all jagged edged and stuff like that. It doesn't have to be super smooth. So I think we're almost there. So I want to clean up this little bit and then actually I will do this next. If I take this L and copy it and paste it in the back with command B, 
to paste in back. I will make this black as well. And then if I just bring this down, grab the C and push to the back with command shift left bracket and it pushes it to the very back, I can make this shadow. If I take these and merge them together using the Pathfinder, so you can find a window Pathfinder, I can merge those together or unite them. And I need to bring that to the back. I can then go in and kind of erase this. Actually, I might just be able to erase it and keep the look. Yeah, see, and then I can just grab the direct selection and kind of make up these shapes again, the texture. I think this is good. Um, so to do some of the final bits, we want to select it all because we want this to be one shape. And if we merge it together, it all <clears throat> kind of connects. So we can then ungroup it. Select this and just to be safe, make sure we're not missing anything. Go up here to select same fill color. So yeah, you can see there's these little bits here that we probably would have missed otherwise. So there. And then if we just select all this, make sure it's all united as one. I'll oh, see there's a weird thing here with this shape. If I select this and then hold shift and select the R, you can see that there's an odd shape in there. And that, you know, that's what happens when you use this Pathfinder. You get weird shapes like that. So there, now it's all one shape. And here's where we can really just give it color, give it more texture, put it on a textured background that really the possibilities are endless. So I mean, you know, I can make this yellow and let's see, I'll make, I copied and pasted in the back and I made that white. And then just to separate it, I will do this again, but with black. And there we have it. Hope you enjoyed this behind the scenes process video of how I take illustrated drawings from paper to vectorizing it in Illustrator and then really piecing it all together and the different techniques I like to use along the way, just kind of iterating on the fly and kind of using these things, uh, these elements that I drew on paper and just combining it all into a final illustrative lettering piece. So thank you for watching this video and uh, I'll catch you in the next one.